The universe is full of trillions and trillions of stars. We have been observing them in the night sky for thousands of years and have learned a lot about them and how they are created and how they eventually die. Welcome to the life cycle of a star. Here is our sun, the most local star and the object at the centre of our solar system. From Earth, it's an extremely bright ball of light, but using an X-ray, we can see a ball of burning gas that's been lighting the solar system for over 4.6 billion years and controls all life on Earth. Compared to Earth, the Sun is enormous, but the Sun is one of many different types and sizes of stars. Let's now see how stars are formed. When a star forms, it involves the use of gravity. They are formed in stellar nebulas, which are the remains of previous stars and made from dust and gases. Eventually, gravity starts to pull clouds of this dust and gas together to form a new object. At the core of this object, it gets extremely hot and gets very dense, which then starts the process of fusion, and our star is formed. This object is known as a protostar. The process in which it was formed is known as stellar ignition. After forming, the new protostar continues to collect dust and gas from the cloud it was formed in. The star is mostly made of hydrogen and a bit of helium right now. This is the first stage of the star's evolution. Some stars can actually fail here if they do not collect enough mass so the fusion process can begin. This results in a brown dwarf star. Brown dwarfs are usually in the size between a giant gas giant like Jupiter and the smallest sizes of stars. They are basically stars that did not collect enough mass to begin the fusion process. After the protostar has finished collecting material, depending on how much mass it has acquired, it either becomes an average sized main sequence star or a larger, more massive star. About 90% of stars in the universe are main sequence stars. Our Sun, in its current form, is currently a main sequence star at the age of 4.6 billion years old, which is just a little older than the Earth. The main sequence stage for the Sun and stars similar to it will last around 10 billion years. Any stars with more mass will only last for 20 to 30 million years, which is a huge difference compared to normal sized main sequence stars like the Sun. There are also tiny stars known as red dwarfs which have less mass than the Sun and burn their hydrogen through the fusion process very slowly which can last from 70 to 100 billion years which makes their life a lot longer than the Sun and is longer than the whole universe's current age of 13.8 billion years so no red dwarf star has actually died yet. Here we can see a size comparison of a red dwarf compared to a sun-sized star. As you can see, a red dwarf is tiny in comparison and is just a little larger than Jupiter, but some can be smaller, making them planet-sized stars. Returning to stars like the Sun, after the main sequence stage ends for a star, where it has used all of its hydrogen it contains through fusion, it starts to burn the next element, which is helium. When burning helium, the star starts to get a little hotter, making it blue but this does not last long as helium runs out very fast. When the helium runs out, the star's core shrinks as the star's outer layers get bigger. This makes a star larger, brighter and cooler, making it a red colour. Our sun was destined to become a red giant as soon as it was created. It will reach the red giant stage in only a few billion years from now, which will start to destroy life on Earth, which means we will have to find another place to live. The sun will cause the global temperature to rise and the seas to evaporate in the intense heat, which will cause Earth to be similar to Venus with a thick cloudy atmosphere, trapping a lot of heat, causing a global greenhouse effect. Eventually, the sun will start to make the Earth so hot that the Earth's surface will melt into a liquid as the star continues to get bigger and closer to the Earth each day. Eventually, it will destroy Mercury and Venus as it gets larger, but we don't know for sure if it will reach the size of the Earth's orbit and destroy it. But either way, the Earth will be fried for sure. Stars with more mass than the Sun will go through the same process only faster, and the star will be bigger, which is either known as a red supergiant or a red hypergiant. Once the red giant hits its limit, it collapses down to its core and explodes out, releasing a ton of material out into space, forming a planetary nebula. This cloud of gas is full of dust and gas, similar to the stellar nebula. The sun's explosion will also cause the Earth to completely vaporise.
new stars can be formed in planetary nebulas and the star formation process can begin again. At the centre of the nebula sits a tiny little white star known as a right dwarf. This is the core of the star that had recently exploded and they are not much larger than the Earth itself and can be quite dense objects. After billions and billions of years, they eventually cool down in temperature creating a black dwarf which would be stone cold. Right now none of these exist yet since the universe is not old enough for one of these two objects to exist yet since the process to become a black dwarf is a very very long one. Uh, stars which had more mass and were a super or hyper giant class star, they go through a different process when they explode. When these stars collapse down on themselves, they explode and create a supernova. When exploding, a supernova can reach the brightness of a whole galaxy for a short time, but will fade again in a few days. These supernovas can have a velocity of 25,000 km a second to 35,000 km a second. These shock wave creates a huge shell of dust and gas which continuously expands till it is no longer visible. What remains is either a neutron star or a black hole in the center where the star once was. A neutron star is a very dense and compact object which is extremely small with a diameter of only 20 kilometers. Compared to Earth, it would be smaller than some mountains. These objects have a very fast spin due to the supernova. Some neutron stars rotate over 200 times a second. Although being very small, they can weigh more than the sun, since they can have more mass than the sun, depending on the mass of the star before it exploded. There are also different types of neutron star, one of which is an object called a pulsar. A pulsar is a very similar object, but a pulsar emits pulses of energy and also shoots beams of electromagnetic radiation that can only be noticed if they are facing Earth, which makes them a very unique object compared to a regular neutron star. Lastly, a black hole is the other outcome to a supernova. They are very mysterious as we do not know too much about them, but what we do know is they're probably the most dangerous objects in the universe. Like pulsars, they are incredibly dense due to all of the star's remains being crushed down to a tiny object. If you get too close to a black hole, the gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. Black holes are very strange in appearance as they can bend light around them which can create distortions when in front of stars or anything that emits light. Will we ever uncover the mystery of what's inside a black hole or will we never know? It's a hard question to answer right now, but one thing's for certain, we will never live to see the sun become a red giant or any of these events happen.